Spray drones are fairly new, less than five years since the first model was being commercialized. But they have been adapting to the agriculture and evolving very fast. In the last two to three years, we have seen a lot of adoption in row crop agriculture and also in specialty crop forestry spraying and all the other jobs. Spray drone has several unique benefits over the traditional ground sprayer. The first one, particularly for Alabama, is we constantly get too much rain and it remains too wet for too long. For spray drones, because they do not touch the ground. So even though the field can be very muddy, they are still able to carry out the operation and conduct spraying. And also the other big benefit is it is very precise and you avoid a lot of the erosion and the compaction issue. You know, just imagine when you drive big row crop sprayer in the crop field, it's a lot of weight on top of the field and then you cause a lot of physical damage on the crop. So we avoid a lot of those issues as well. It is very important to keep in mind if you are interested in flying spraying drones particularly, there are several exemptions you need to uh, obtain from the FAA and also you need to follow state and the local regulations, pesticide laws to obtain proper certificates and a permit so you can spray or spread pesticide or other chemicals with the drones. I wouldn't be too surprised to see the spray drone numbers and the spray drone numbers triple or even increase by fivefold after three to five years, which means a lot of new operators and of, uh, farmers start to uh, uh, using the technology. So I think there are lots of opportunities for us as land-grant institution and extension system. There's still a lot of trial, uh, research, and educational effort that we need to uh, continue, and the more uh, educational products that we need to uh, uh, generate to support our operators and farmers.